In episode number 301, I showed you how to extract out a Ruby gem from an existing application. This gem is called URL Formatter, and we did not publish this gem, so it's only available on our local system. So to use this gem in our application, we must specify the path option inside of the gem file. In this episode, I'll show you how to publish this gem and share it with the world so anyone can add it to their gem file. Now I recommend hosting the source code of this gem on GitHub, so that's the first thing we'll do here. Now we already have a Git repository set up inside of this project directory here, thanks to Bundler when we set it up. You can call git status and, and see that we have a repo here, but we do have several files which have not been added. So let's add those and then do our first commit with git commit, and we'll say a message saying initial commit, like that. And then point your browser to github.com and create an account here if you haven't already, but I already do, so I'll just create a new repository here and then fill this in. There we go, that looks good. So I'll create this. And then it gives us some instructions for adding the repo. And since we have an existing Git repository already, we'll just run these two commands here. The first command here adds GitHub as the remote origin. And then the second command here pushes the source code up to GitHub. There we go. Now, if I reload this project page here, you can see that our repository is all set up with our initial commit. So now that our project is up on GitHub, anyone can use our URL formatter gem here by simply referencing the URL here. So we'll use the git readonly URL. And then if we copy this, we can use that in the gem file for any project. So instead of specifying a path option here, you specify a git option and then paste in the URL for that git repository. So now the next time we run the bundle command here, it will pull this gem down from GitHub instead of using our local path here. So this means we can share this gem with anyone through this means. But how do we actually make this an officially released gem? To do that, we need to publish this gem to rubygems.org. And that is very easy. You just need to call the gem build and gem push commands inside of your gem. But before we get into that, we need to set up a couple more things. Inside of the gem project here, we have a version file under the lib directory that we set to 001 alpha. So it was in episode number 301 where we added this alpha portion because we were in early development of the gem. But now that we're ready to release, we can remove alpha from the version number. And since we are making an official release here, it's a good idea to keep a change log of all the uh, changes across different versions. So uh, here I can make a change log file. Let's make it a markdown file. So this uh, is version number 001, and normally you would list all of the changes here, but since it's the first release, we'll just say initial release. Now it's very important that before you build a gem that you commit all of the changes. So we can call git add here, and we can check it with git status. That looks good. So let's commit this, and we'll say uh, releasing uh, version 001, like that. And now it's time to build the gem. So you could do gem build and gem push, but uh, Bundler provides a nice rake task for doing all that here called rake release. And the nice benefit of this is that it also tags a release in GitHub and pushes it up. All right, there you go. You can see that version 001 was pushed up to rubygems.org. Now this may ask you for your login credentials for rubygems.org, so you may need to make an account there to uh, log in. And if we visit the GitHub project, you can see that commit was pushed up here, version 001, and we have a tag of that release as well. That points to that commit. So now when someone wants to use this gem in a project, it's no longer necessary to specify the git option because it's now an official release on rubygems.org. So we can just strip all the options out. Now it's a simple gem URL formatter. Now that the gem has been officially released, you may wanna to go to the version file inside of your gem project and then change this and bump it up to the next version and say alpha on it because this is a sign that you're developing the next version on this current code base. Next, I wanna show you some tools and services you can use to improve your gem now that it's released. And the first thing here I highly recommend is Travis CI. This is a continuous integration server that will automatically run your tests in the background for you when you push changes up to GitHub. So to, do, to get started, you just go to travisci.org and then click on sign in with GitHub. And this will take you through the GitHub authentication if you haven't been signed in already. And then once you're signed in, just go to your profile. And this provides you with a nice list of your repositories, which you can enable Travis on by simply turning it on here. 
Now alternatively, you can configure this on the GitHub side if you need to customize it further. To do this, you can go to the admin section of your GitHub project and then click on service hooks. And then there's a Travis service hook way down here. And then you can configure those options here. Now normally you probably won't need to do this, but just in case, here are the various settings you would use and you can set the token to what is provided on the Travis profile page. So now Travis CI will automatically run the tests in the background and then notice here it shows you the status and this failed. So if we can check out why it failed here by clicking on the build number and it shows us the output it would get from the console as it's running the various commands. And notice when it tries to run the rake command here, it got an error saying rake is not part of the bundle. So we need to add it to our uh, dependency. This is an easy fix. We can just add rake as a development dependency inside of our gem. So inside of the gem spec file here, under development dependencies, I'll just add rake here, and that way it should run on Travis. And then we can commit that change with git commit dash a dash m, and we can say adding rake dependency here, like that. And then run git push to push it up to GitHub. And now notice that Travis CI automatically picked up that we made our change on GitHub and it's running it now. So we can click on this and see that this is the progress it's making. So let's see if this passes now. And notice that this fails here, which is not too surprising because this is using Ruby 187, but I specifically wrote this gem with uh, Ruby 1.9, and so it has some special syntax in there, so that's why it's failing. So uh, we need to instruct Travis to only use Ruby 1.9 for testing this. To do this, we need to go into our gem project here and add a file in the root directory called .travis.yaml. And so this is a YAML configuration file for Travis. And there's only one option we need to set here called RVM. We just need to set it to uh, 192. And so that will use only Ruby 192. And you can add as many other versions here as you want. So I need to add the file here and then commit that change. Let's say adding Travis YAML file. And then I could just git push to push it up to GitHub. Now Travis automatically picks up that change and reruns the tests. You can see now, uh, using Ruby 192, that all of our tests pass now. Yay! Now Travis CI provides a nice build status image, which you may want to add to your README for your project. So inside of our gems README here, I'm just going to paste in some markdown here to add our build status image at the end of our title inside the README. Now I already committed and pushed up that change. So now in our GitHub project README, it now shows that our build is passing right here. Awesome. Next, I want to focus on improving the documentation for this gem because usually a readme isn't enough. And to do this, I like to share the R docs using rubydoc.info. But currently our gem doesn't have any built-in documentation. We can do this by simply adding comments to our gem source code. And you should do this for every method that you consider a public API to your gem. Now there's only one method here that I consider public and that would be the format URL method instead of the model additions module here. So I'll just add some comments here to describe how this method works. Now if your method accepts any arguments or a hash of options, it's a good idea to describe those in detail here so this serves more as a reference. And one thing to point out is that I'm using some custom formatting here for our doc. Uh, this for example here will just make a code snippet uh, in this area. For more information on this markup syntax, check out the rdoc readme here, and there's an entire section on the rdoc markup, which you can check out to uh, learn more on what is supported inside of those comments. Now, if you're using yard, which is supported by rubydoc.info, there are some additional options you can pass inside of the documentation. Check out the getting started with yard guide here for more information on that. Now I've already committed and pushed that rdoc change inside of our gem. So now let's add our project to rubydoc.info. Just click add project here, paste in the public git URL on GitHub here and click on go. And here it is. You can see the first thing it displays here is our readme automatically pulls that in. And if we click on our model additions module here, you can see that it displays the documentation for the format URL method, just like we expect. Now it's a good idea to link to the rdoc documentation from the readme so that way if someone's browsing the GitHub project, then they will see it. And there's a nice permalink for each uh, method here, so if you want to link to something specific. Now another good place to add some extensive documentation is the GitHub wiki. You can see here in my CanCan project, this is what I've done. It's a pretty complex gem here, so I split off a lot of different documentation into various sections in the wiki here. And you may want to do this for more complex projects. 
Another service that can help out with documentation is Relish. And this ties in nicely with Cucumber feature. So if you're using Cucumber, consider doing this. And as you can see here, this is an RSpec documentation and is quite extensive and nice here. So now that your gem is well documented and well tested, now is time to advertise it so that others know about it. One such good place is the Ruby Toolbox, which is an excellent resource for finding gems that solve a specific problem. So what you can do here is just go to Projects, and then go to Suggest a New Project, and you may need to sign in through GitHub here if you haven't already, and then you can uh, specify a category and provide your GitHub path and Ruby gem name. Another good place to share your gem is on rubyflow.com. What you can do is uh, write a blog post about it or something that shows how to use it in an example case, and then uh, post about it here. And that way uh, others will pick up on it as well. Now, once you feel your gem is production ready and rock solid, you can share it with some podcasts such as the Ruby Show. Uh, just contact them there and uh, share your gem with them. And Ruby 5 is another excellent podcast that you can share your gem with. Uh, just click on send it in and let them know. Well, that wraps up this episode on making a gem and sharing it with the world. Hope you found it useful. Thanks for watching.